I, I'm worried about vultures in Africa. I am, we're in crisis mode. We used to have to worry about the occasional farmer putting out poison and maybe we'd lose 30 to 50 vultures. I've seen populations decline at my vulture restaurant from 350 to 500 birds to I'm lucky if I get 30 to 50 birds. Namibia is a vast country with one of the lowest human population densities on Earth. It's home to an abundance of wildlife, which, despite the sometimes harsh conditions, flourishes here. In order for this habitat to stay healthy, it needs to be kept clean and disease-free. And that's a job for these highly specialized creatures. Vultures. Vultures do not hunt live prey. They're scavengers who feed off the carcasses of dead animals. Without their exceptional housekeeping skills, carcasses would be left to rot, creating the perfect breeding ground for the spread of diseases. And while they may not be in the running for any beauty awards, their role as undertakers of the bush makes them indispensable to the environment. But vulture numbers are plummeting. Near Ajirarongo, on the edge of the Kalahari Desert, an organization called the Rare and Endangered Species Trust, or REST, is a sanctuary to rehabilitate rescued vultures. Maria Diekman founded the sanctuary in the year 2000, and while there are many other species of animals in her care, it was the plight of the vultures that spurred her to found the organization. Vultures are my passion. I mean, vultures are how I started out. Um, they're an amazing animal. Scientifically, they are just one of the most intense developed animals in the world. They probably have the best eyesight of any animal in the world. They are immune to diseases like anthrax, botulism, rabies. I mean, we as humans are not immune to those diseases. But vultures are not immune to being caught in power lines or to poison, the main reasons why they end up here at rest. And as one would expect, vultures in captivity need very specialized care. So obviously, if you have raptors, they have to get the right diet. Um, it's essential. They've got to get calcium. And particularly with vultures, it's essential that they get the intestines and the heart and the liver and the lungs and maybe are exposed to parasites that they would normally be exposed to in the wild. So we try to keep it as natural as possible. We have little starvation periods. They don't get fed every day because it's essential for a vulture to only be fed a couple of times a week. They've got to build up that crop and, and store their food and then actually release it slowly. And it can get really messy, you know. We're not feeding up, you know, little styrofoam packets of meat. Um, you know, we're collecting things from farmers, um, intestines from a from a kudu that maybe they shot, and that's what we survive on. One of the feeding adaptations vultures have is a really strong beak that can tear and rip at flesh and bone. The lack of feathers on their heads allows them to really get stuck into their meal without having to preen or groom themselves afterwards. And even in captivity, there's a definite pecking order at dinner time, especially amongst the different species of vulture. Again, this is a behavior that would be displayed in the wild, and it's essential that they maintain these habits. Maria's goal is to rehabilitate and release the vultures as soon as possible. But even once they're healthy, there is no guarantee that they'll be safe. The main reason Maria has seen vulture numbers decline so drastically over the last few years is that vultures are yet another casualty of the poaching crisis facing Africa's wildlife. What's happening now is we've got elephant poachers, and they've realized that the vultures circle in the air, so people see it. So what the elephant poachers are doing now is taking out the ivory, lacing the entire elephant carcass with poison, we're probably losing 500 to 1,000 vultures with every elephant carcass that are dying. We can't sustain a massive decline like that. And vultures are the garbage collectors. They keep our environment clean. So if we can't lose a species in Africa, it's the vulture. Luckily, poisoning is not necessarily a death sentence for vultures. It's all about timing and quick response, which is why some of the birds are fitted with satellite devices. After they're released, their movements can be tracked. So you can monitor through the satellite whether that bird has stopped for two days, you go out there and you find a thousand birds that you wouldn't have found dead before. If I can get to them fast enough, we've got medications, we've got drips, we've got rehydration, we can save them usually. We can find poison sites and we can monitor an individual bird. 
Vultures are long-lived animals, and they breed slowly, meaning that the populations are going to take a long time to recover, especially from the loss of the huge numbers they're dying in. And if they go, all other animals will be affected. As Maria says, if there's one animal in Africa that we simply cannot afford to lose, it's the vulture. <laughs>